Hello, welcome to Analytics for All. Uh, today we're going to be doing data cleaning within Excel. It's going to be a workshop. I'm going to walk you through uh, a typical data cleaning process using Excel. Uh, as always, I've uploaded the files you can work on. Exercise files can be downloaded at HTTP Analytics for All forward slash exercise dash files dash downloads. When you come to the site, just look for this data cleaning workshop uh, and this green data cleaning that drop down. That'll give you the downloaded Excel file we'll be working with. You don't need any other software for this project today, just for me using plain Excel. Uh, data cleaning is a very important part of any data analytics, data science work. Actually, it's probably 60 to 80 percent of the time you're going to spend working with your data. So taking the time to learn some steps dealing with this is pretty important. Now, there are some great third-party software options out there, but some of them are rather expensive. But really, taking the time, Excel can handle a whole lot of this, and taking a little bit of time to learn some steps will bring you a long way in this. In this example today, we're going to be teaching you the following. I'm going to be handling the following steps of data cleaning. Now, obviously, every job has its own uh, extras and things you don't use based on the job. But here, in this example, we're going to be doing some very common data cleaning operations. We're going to be finding duplicates. We're going to be looking for spelling errors. We're going to learn how to handle missing data. We're going to be converting some data, and we're going to merge our data sets together. Okay? Well, before we go any further, let's go ahead and look at the data we have. Okay, so if you open up the file I downloaded, what we have here is uh, this is an imaginary garage. In this garage, what I've got here is a list of the work orders, the dates the work was performed, the license plate of the car, the service that was performed, and the mechanic who performed the service. Uh, I've also got a second sheet here which provides me with the license plate numbers and what kind of cars they are. Okay, this is from a separate data set. And then finally, I have a list of the services and the prices they're provided. We're going to try to merge all this together into one file so that we can do a little analytics work off it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to focus on is duplicate values because that's one of the biggest problems when you pull data data is never clean there's always and that's having duplicate values is a real problem especially when you start adding up your doing your aggregates your sums won't come out right your totals aren't going to come out right you're not going to match any ledger books if i've got four or five of the same work order in there because we obviously didn't charge the customer for that same work three times so we got to find these duplicate values and get rid of them so excel makes this pretty easy to do what you want to do is go across your data set here and highlight it Okay, and then come up here on your under your home tab on the ribbon bar. You're going to see this thing, conditional formatting. Okay, uh, this is pretty easy to use. You just drop down the menu, and then we are going to let me slide over as you can see. We're going to highlight cell rules. Scroll down, look, and you see this one here, duplicate values. Just click on it. Now, this option pops up. I don't really care for the red text myself. I'm going to change it to green. Okay, now say okay bring it over now you look and you see we've got a lot of duplicates now some of these are fine some of these obviously the mechanics are all going to be duplicate because these have all people have all done different same jobs uh we're having the same services cars will return but these are the concerns here see these work orders i have two work order lists here for this guy for this one ending in five three and two for this one ending in four six those are duplicate workers we want to get rid of them now in a small data set like this you can just delete them but imagine you run a real garage you'd have hundreds maybe thousands of these work orders you don't want to go through and try to delete each one individually so one thing you can use is under the same tool you're going to go up here to the data tab now and there should be a tab here it's called remove duplicates okay Make sure you're still highlighted, click on that, and it will say select all, remove the duplicates, and say OK. Two duplicate values are removed, 26, 27 unique remain. So now you see that removed one each of those duplicates. So I no longer have the full duplicates. Now as far as getting rid of this color now, because it doesn't matter, just go back, re-highlight. We're going to go back to our home screen conditional formatting and clear rules and let me slide this over so you can see it oops sorry and highlight again and conditional formatting clear rules clear rules from selected cells okay now you see we're back no more color everything looks good again okay so the next thing on our list is looking for spelling errors well 
on this data set you're not really going to find any but what I want to do is I want to show you how you may find them through our typical work here so let's go ahead and inflict some spelling errors let's go down and pick one eh, I'm going to go to record 8 here I'm going to change oil filter to oil falter and I'm going to go down to record 13 and change tires to T-Rees okay leave it alone don't worry about it now we've inflicted these spelling errors I'm going to show you how we're going to find these spelling errors later because a lot of this work really this list is not a guideline of steps down this list you're going to be dealing with uh, iterative you're going to be finding problems and keep going back and doing new things to and fix the problems so let's move on to the next step of handling missing data now this is one of the trickier parts here okay what I've got here is you can see I've got a couple work orders here where the mechanics name is missing now this is a situation where you're gonna to have to refer to your company's policy talk to your boss whatever how do they want to handle missing data some people would want to say well just delete the records because we don't know who did it others would say well, let's put in a, a, a place value let's get something in there so that we don't we don't want to lose this work was done we don't know who did it but work was done the customer was charged money was made but we just have no place value so let's put in a missing place value so what we're going to do is we're going to use an if statement to fix this problem okay an if statement is what's known as a logic statement uh, anybody who's used to programming has done these before what we're stating basically is if something is true then we're going to do this so you know if it is raining bring an umbrella so the syntax used in excel is really simple it's uh, equal to always use equal to start any formula or function if then we put the parentheses in if x equals y comma then this then statement so if x is raining then bring an umbrella else don't bring an umbrella okay so let's go ahead and put this into practice on our excel what we're trying to figure out is we're trying to find a way to fill in these missing spots so we're going to go right next to it in f and we're going to start equal and we're going to say if and then we're going to say if e2 which is the mechanic thing here is equal to then you put two double quotes with no space in between that means empty then I'm gonna use 99 I'm putting it in quotes because I want it to be a string else just leave this alone so my statement basically says if this is empty then I want to place 99 in place otherwise leave it alone keep the space okay so we're gonna say enter and there you go I got BL so we're gonna just this little square right here on the bottom if we bring your cursor over it comes to next and you double click it fills in everything all the way down your table saves you a lot of time okay so as you see where a name was there good where it wasn't you got this 99 value here here so good we filled it in now you have two options at this point what you can do is I can right click and cover all these copy and I can do what's called a paste special values and that will paste over top of everything there and fill in my spots uh, that's good in this place in this position it actually works a lot of times what I don't like to do that so I end up leaving it alone and I just hide a column but in this case it's okay we're just gonna copy this whole section again right click copy go here scroll down to paste go to paste special and hit this values right down here and there okay that's good now we can just get rid of this cell completely all right so now we fixed it now we have 99s where our empty spaces used to be okay our next step is we're going to convert data all right now now often the data you get is not in the it's not how you want to see it you want to see it differently what I've got here is I have this date time thing I want to I'm curious as to what day of the week this work is done because that that you know you can report on that was Sunday my busiest day is Saturday my busiest day I don't have one of those rain man type minds where you can just give me a date and I can tell you what day of the week it was so I'm gonna use Excel to show me this so we're gonna go here we're going to insert a new cell and we're gonna call it weekday 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a conversion of the data. We're going to use a converting function. Okay, we're going to convert to text using the equals text function. And the way this works, the syntax behind it is text parentheses, the cell, which is the reference data you want to convert. And I'm using DDDD. This gives me day. You could use MMMM for months. You could use YYY for years. You could use all kinds of things. You could do weeks, WWW for weeks. But we're just using DDDD. It gives us the day. Okay, so going back to our Excel worksheet, we're going to go here. I'm going to say text, oops, I forgot the T, text, and you notice these things light up below, you can see them, and you can hit on it there, and it gives you hints on what to do, value, format, text, you know. So the value I want is the requested on date, and again, double quotes in Excel. If you're used to like SQL, you use single quotes and message you up, I understand. Close it out, and there we go. Now we know that day is Friday. Again, hit that little box, and you can see the days, the week, all this work is done. Okay. Now, if you're not concerned with this date changing later, you can do that whole copy and paste special again, and that'll get rid of the formula. Because if you notice, when I bring these up, if you look in here, it still has the formula as the value instead of in this place, it just has the value there. But if you do do that, if you do the copy and paste special, if you go and change this date later, this will not work again. It'll, it will not change properly. So I'm just going to leave it with the formula. We're at the 11 minute mark, so I'm going to bring this to a break right now. Uh, this is Analytics for All. We're going to go into a second part to do the merging in there and uh, hope you come back for part two. And good, welcome, welcome to go visit my site, analyticsforall.org. Got lots of good videos and uh, Lots of good articles on working with Excel and all things analytics. Till next time.